So we are uh, continuing chapter 16 today. We um, introduced the phylum arthropoda last week, and you were exposed to two of the major subphyla there, the crustaceans and the chelicerata, the spiders and scorpions and things of that nature. Um, the largest uh, group of, of arthropods are the insects. And so we're gonna be looking this week at the insect class and several of the orders within it. There are tons of orders of insects and your book gives you a big table of them and then talks about six of them in detail. I'm only gonna lecture over four of those six. There's a lot of classes of insect in it and you can take actually entire courses in, um, in entomology and the study of insects. There's so much to do here. So to try to get it all into one lecture, we're just nutshelling the, the highlights here. Okay, and this is a cockroach that is saying hi to you here. So next time you squish one, that's the face of the, of the entity that you just destroyed. There he is. Okay, so take a moment and write that down. So arthropods, we talked about last week, arthropods all have an exoskeleton. They all have paired jointed appendages um, and they all have segmented bodies. Um, for insects, we get a little bit more specific. Insects all have three pairs of walking legs. They all have six legs. So if you see a bug that has more than six legs, it is still an arthropod, but it's not an insect. Insects all have six legs, three pairs of walking legs. Almost all of them have two pairs of wings. There are some exceptions to that. Almost every insect has four wings. They don't all fly with all four wings. Sometimes two of the wings have been turned into a protection over um, other wings that they use to fly. But sometimes they use all four to fly. There are, of course, some orders of insects that don't have wings or only have one pair of wings. But uh, generally, insects have two pairs of wings. Generally, insects have three segments. Um, they have a head that is separate from a thorax, that is separate from an abdomen, and usually the abdomen is segmented. And so, the thorax all looks like one unit, the head all looks like one unit, and then the abdomen very frequently you can see segments and lines in it, like it has scales on its abdomen, okay? Um, and then they all have one pair of sensory antenna. Um, so they'll have, you know, a pair of antenna sticking out of the top of their head. Some insects have diverse kinds of mouth parts that look like they're also antenna, but they're not. Um, an insect has, two antenna has one pair of sensory antenna. And they use the antenna for olfactory reception, which means smell. They smell with their antenna, right? Um, and so they're not they're not seeing or hearing with their antenna, but they're smelling with their antenna. Oftentimes they can also pick up on um, wind currents and motion in their environment from like disturbances in the air with their antenna as well. But typically it's a smelling organ. Um, so, you know, we, we smell with our nose, obviously, and your mom makes a fresh plate of cookies, and the little cookie molecules waft up into your nose as you inhale, and you're like, ooh, mom made cookies. The, uh, a bug, though, when, when bug mama makes cookies, which, you know, they don't, but that's okay. When bug, when bug mama makes cookies, the little pieces of cookie would float through the air and land on the antenna, and then junior bug would be like, ooh, mom made cookies. Right, okay, so um, that they smell with their antenna. Diversity of design. There are so many kinds of insects. I, I don't know if you can understand how diverse this class is. There are more kinds of beetle than any other species, than any other group of animals in the world. So in Genesis 1, when God says, let the earth produce swarming and crawling creatures, right? And he makes bugs there. He makes insects there. Um, there are more kinds of beetle than any other order of life. There are more kinds of beetle than there are kinds of, you know, carnivores, than there are kinds of, of you know, birds, and there are kinds of anything else. When God went to town and made beetles, he made tons of beetles, right? Um, and then, and so when we get there, we have to understand that there are, there are, so many different ways to be a bug. There are so many different kinds of bugs out there. When God made legs for these bugs, 
Some insect legs are good for jumping. Some insect legs are good for walking. Some are for fighting. Some for, are for carrying things. There are some uh, insects that have one set of legs that are just used for courtship. Um, there are other kinds of legs for digging and some for hunting. Um, you know, jumping. I, a, a cricket is famous, or sorry, a grasshopper is famous for jumping, right? Grasshoppers, uh, big ones, big grasshoppers, three and a half, four inches long. And um, that grasshopper, when he jumps, uh, if, he, if he does the best jump he can, he can clear about two meters, like six and a half feet, okay? So if this, if this bug, if this bug is 10 centimeters long, and he jumps for two meters. That means that he has jumped 20 times his body length. Okay, to turn that into human terms. Okay, uh, who, who's on the basketball team here? Crystal's on the basketball team here. Crystal is approximately five feet, you're not that tall, five foot what? <laughs> five foot four. So five foot four, Let's turn that into meters. So you are approximately, we'll just say you're one and a half meters tall. One and a half meters tall. Um, and if you were a grasshopper and you could jump 20 times your body length, that would mean that you could jump uh, 20 times one and a half, 30 meters. Okay, 30 meters is uh, longer than an Olympic sized swimming pool. Okay, so she could stand. She could stand at one end of an Olympic-sized swimming pool, and without getting a running start, just boing and land on the other side of the Olympic-sized swimming pool. Okay, so when you put that into human terms, it's astounding. And then carrying, shh, quiet please. Carrying uh, leaf cutter ants. Leaf cutter ants uh, chew a section off of a lamp, uh, off of a lamp, off of a leaf and then carry that leaf back into their hive where they let it mold and they actually grow um, fungus that they eat off of the decaying leaf litter. So it's pretty cool. Um, but they need to carry leaf litter back into their hive and they don't want to carry it like little piece by little piece by little piece at a time because that's silly. It's not a good use of effort. So these ants will cut off as big a piece of leaf as they can carry and bring, bring a big piece of leaf at a time down into their hive. Um, a leaf cutter ant can carry 15 times its body weight in leaf as it goes into its hive. Okay, so um, I, I exercise, I, you know, try to, try to, I try to be healthy. Uh, I, I bench press, but I can't bench press 15 times my body weight. Right, I weigh 200 pounds. 15 times my body weight would be 3,000 pounds. Okay. So if you put 3,000 pounds on a barbell and, and ask me to lift it, I'm just gonna die. Right? There's there's no other option. So the things that bugs can do is amazing. It's amazing um, what what God has done, and He's taken the same general design: six legs. Two sets of wings, segmented body. How many things can I do with this? And it's amazing. Um, when you look at wings, uh, scale-covered wings, membranous wings, leather-like wings, and wings that are basically extensions of the exoskeleton, called horny wings. Um, and all of these wings are used for flight, except the horny ones. The horny ones are there to protect the membranous ones. Um, and you'll see pictures of those in a little bit. Mouth parts. Some bugs bite, some bugs chew, some bugs pierce your skin and, um, and eat your subdermal tissue, called a, a tick. Some bugs uh, pierce your skin and drink your blood, called a mosquito. Um, some everted mouth parts. I, this one's going to be great. I'm sorry I don't have you just before lunch. Um, but but uh, flies, common house fly. When he lands, next time, next time a fly lands, Watch its mouth. As soon as the fly lands, you'll see this black thing go down out of its mouth and like flatten on the ground. Every time a fly lands, it tries to eat because it doesn't always, you know, find a great meal. So every time a fly lands, you'll see this black thing go out of its mouth. 
That black thing is actually its stomach. Flies put their stomach on top of their food, and then it, it just it, it just absorbs through the stomach wall. So when a fly lands on you, you're like, "Ooh, there's your stomach," and then he's dead, right? But um, every time a fly lands, he puts his stomach on top of his food. It's pretty cool. It's called an inverted mouth part. Um, General insect body plan again has has six legs, three pairs of legs. Uh, generally speaking, two pairs of wings. Here's the two pairs of wings on this bee. Um, they have one set of antenna. They'll have a head and a thorax, and then a segmented abdomen. Same thing for this ant. Three pairs of legs, two pairs of antenna. I'm uh, sorry, one pair of antenna, and three body parts. Uh, an ant. The um, the drone, sorry, the, the worker ants don't have wings, but the queens do. Uh, so uh, th this particular one does not have wings. And then some have stingers, um, but that's okay. Here's just some insects, right? So again, the diversity of God's design is amazing. So these are, some butterflies are obviously really pretty. And then beetles, the diversity of beetles is amazing. Uh, mouth parts, mouth parts get really diverse. Um, the same general structures, a labrum, a mandible, a maxilla, and a labium. But the way that you arrange them turns it into one for drinking, one, one for, uh, well, one for drinking like you, one for drinking out of a flower, um, other ones for like chewing on a grasshopper. Um, there's all kinds of different ways of arranging these essential four parts. And here's some just pictures of different mouth parts of, of insects. And those all happen to be ants, different kinds of ant mouth parts. Okay. Um, legs, if you were to compare an insect leg to a human leg, they even call the parts of the insect leg the same parts that they call a mammal leg, even though there's no bones in there, but they still call it a femur and a tibia and tarsus, even though there's no actual bones in there, but they, they label it the same way. Swimming legs, jumping legs, digging legs, uh, whack your head off legs, um, all kinds of cool things that God has done with bugs. Here's wings, um, different kinds of wings, different colors of wings. Um, they're beautiful. So take a second and write that down. So. How do bugs make a living? Um, there are three stages to their gut, and there's kind of the same three stages in your gut. Um, you have teeth, so you chew your food. I just took a bite of a Pop-Tart, and I chewed it up. I didn't swallow it whole, because we grind things up in our face. Uh, but a bug doesn't really grind things up in its face. A bug takes a bite that's big enough for it to swallow with, it, with the parts on its face and then a, a swallowed, more or less, big chunk of food goes into the first part of the gut called the foregut, and the crop and the gizzard are muscular organs that have uh, bony plates inside them, and the muscles squeeze and the bony plates grind up the food. So it's kind of like they have teeth inside their stomach, kind of how that works. Um, and so the crop and the gizzard are there to grind up the food. And then they have a stomach, uh, where most of the uh, most of the, the absorption happens, uh, we do most of the absorption in our intestines. A uh, bug does most of its absorption in its stomach, uh, and then after the stomach, there's an intestine and an anus, just like in other animals. But it, for the bug, the intestine is mostly there to dry things out and absorb water. Uh, the The intestine doesn't absorb very many nutrients. For us, the intestines were all the nutrients in um, They very frequently have symbiotic relationships with protozoans and bacteria living in their, in their stomach. And so especially things that eat wood, like termites and carpenter ants and things of that nature, um, because they don't have the machinery in their stomach to break down wood. So they rely on bacteria and protozoans living in their stomach to break down the wood for them. Um, and then they breathe. They don't breathe through a mouth with or a nose. They don't have any lungs. They don't have any gills. 
There is no respiratory structure that you're going to find in the grasshopper when you cut them open. Um, the way that they breathe is through their exoskeleton. They'll have holes in their exoskeleton with little tubes going from uh, the outside in, and those tubes branch, and uh, they, they branch into such fine uh, structures that the, the cells of the, of the bug just absorb oxygen and release CO2 directly into those tubules. So there's no oxygenation of the blood. There's no um, lungs or gills to, to function as major respiratory organs. They just have these branching holes all around their body. Um, and those are called spiracles, and the little tubes are called trachea. Okay? And then they also, like all arthropods, have an open circulatory system. So they have a heart that is like works like a bilge pump. It sucks puddled blood up off the bottom of the animal and squirts it back over the top of the animal and lets it filter down. So um, no major veins or arteries or capillaries or anything like that. It's just a, a bilge sort of system. Um, and then their waste, this is interesting. Your body, uh, solid, undigested waste is eliminated out through the intestine. And then waste from your cells that is produced by cellular metabolism goes into your blood, your, ki your kidneys filter it out and then you pee. For a bug, the cellular waste that is in their blood gets filtered out and then put back in the intestine. So both undigested food material and cellular waste, metabolic waste, both kinds come out of the intestine. So they only have one opening for waste elimination, um, and both kinds of waste come out the same hole. Um, there you go. Done writing this real. Okay, so uh, another slide here. They have a very simple nervous system. So, like all arthropods, they're not going to be the arthropod Mensa Award winners, right? Nobody's going to get a PhD as a cockroach. A uh, very, very simple brain, but they have a lot of senses and a lot of sensory perception. So, even though their brain is only a couple of dozen neurons, uh, they process their environment very well. They have compound eyes and simple eyes. And so we, we talked about that with regard to arthropods. Some compound eyes have hundreds of lenses, all pointing in different directions. And the brain interprets all the signals from all of those lenses as a compound image. And then simple eyes, just one lens with a, a fixed focal point, and basically all it does is detect light or dark. Um, olfactory and sense of touch come from the antenna. Um, they do have a sense of taste. So a, um, a bug eating, you know, a crumb that fell off of your table would be able to tell if it's uh, a crumb of eggs or a crumb of bread or a crumb of Pop-Tart. Um, it does have senses of taste. Um, and then they have tactile hairs around the body. Remember, they've got an exoskeleton, this thick shell. And if you touch a bug on its shell, it'll be able to, to detect pressure, but no like detailed sensation because it's like you're wearing a, a suit of armor. You're not going to have a lot of re sensory reception on the outside of that suit of armor. And so they have hairs that pop out of their exoskeleton at various points in their body that they can use for the sense of touch. And when the hair gets disturbed, there are nerve endings at the base of the hair that can tell the brain or something just touched the hair over there, okay? So they have tactile hairs, they have taste, they have smell, they have sight. Um, various kinds of odd uh, sexual reproduction happens in insects. It's all separate sexes. There are no hermaphroditic bugs that we have discovered at this point. Um, but some of their courtship rituals and how they go about having offspring is rather bizarre. Um, quite frequently, as in arthropods and spiders, quite fre frequently the female eats the male after she's been fertilized, um, and so he's a one and done kind of kind of guy. Um, and then uh, they have all kinds of different designs for protecting their eggs. Sometimes they, uh, sometimes a female will lay eggs on the bottom of a leaf and then cover it with this hard enamel sort of protein that makes the eggs almost uh, impenetrable, like covering them 
in, in uh, epoxy or something like that. And the eggs are protected. Sometimes they make a large egg sac and try to hide it somewhere. Sometimes they lay thousands of eggs, um, you know, scattered around their environment on the hopes that at least some will survive. Uh, some of the most fun um, egg protection, egg laying strategies come from wasps, where they will lay their eggs inside uh, another bug. Um, and so the bug, the host bug, will be parasitized and eaten from the inside out by the hatching wasp. Um, that can even happen to humans in certain parts of the world. There are bugs, there are wasps that will sting you um, and not, not inject venom in you, but will inject their eggs. And then you will have little wasp maggots that uh, are, are growing inside your skin and then will eat their way to the surface. Isn't that awesome? That's so fun. Um, so there's all kinds of things that are out there that are really interesting in the insect world. Uh, metamorphosis is another big deal when it comes to changing, um, when it comes to insects. Uh, other animals have metamorphosis too, but nobody does it as well as insects, um, where the, the different life stages look so different from each other. Um, there are two strategies to metamorphosis. One is called incomplete metamorphosis because it only has three stages. One is called complete metamorphosis and has four stages. Um, in incomplete metamorphosis, the egg hatches and what comes out of the egg looks more or less like a, a very small, slightly oddly proportioned adult. And so um, a, a bug that has incomplete metamorphosis the baby looks like mom and dad. It just has to get bigger. And sometimes the coloration is different. Sometimes the proportions of things are different. Quite often the, the nymph, the baby version of the bug does not have wings and will develop wings as an adult. Uh, and so we, we call that plan incomplete metamorphosis because it doesn't change a whole lot. The nymph is a smaller, immature version of the adult that lacks wings. Complete metamorphosis, where it goes egg, larva, pupae, adult, that one is where we see lots of body style change. And so the larva looks nothing like the adult. Think about butterflies and caterpillars. The caterpillar is the larva. The butterfly is the adult. One is segmented with 20 or more pairs of legs, and the uh, one is uh, not nearly as segmented, and it only has three pairs of legs. One has four huge, beautiful wings. One has no wings at all, right? One is one is an eating, growing machine. The other one, um, some adult butterflies don't even eat. They just live long enough to reproduce, and then they die. Um, and so uh, these are, you know, there's huge differences between there. The larva stage tends to look sort of worm-like, long and squishy. And then the adult stage uh, definitely does not. The adult stage looks very different. The pupa is a resting stage. It's a cocoon sort of stage where the animal goes from being this long, squishy, worm-like thing to the more glorious-looking adult. Um, so that's the pupa. Um, Oh, bug anatomy. So this is a grasshopper. You will see this uh, on Wednesday. A, a dorsal circulatory system and a ventral nervous system. And then the gut goes through the middle, uh, the foregut, the midgut, the hindgut, and then um, the, the uh, respiratory system is just this branching set of tubes that go all through the body and the tubes open to the air at several points, and um, the air just circulates. And, and the body doesn't do anything to move the air forcefully, it's just diffusion that goes to the bug. Which is why when you spray a bug with bug spray, it's why they die so quick. Because the bug spray gets into that respiratory system and moves through, the, uh, moves through all the trachea and gets to all the cells at about the same time. Um, and so that's why bug spray is as effective as it is. Metamorphosis, 
Grasshoppers are the incomplete metamorphosis where the adult and the nymph look a lot alike. Um, it just basically gets bigger and then develops wings as an adult. Uh, but it's going to molt like four or five times on its way to adulthood and um, just get bigger and a little bit more complicated each time. Whereas complete metamorphosis over here, um, a ladybug looks nothing like its larval stage. That's the same creature, right? Um, and then the pupa, this thing, this is it cocooning and turning into the adult ladybug. Um, and then, of course, the eggs over there. So complete metamorphosis versus incomplete metamorphosis. Uh, let's see. Here's another example of metamorphosis, obviously. This is the larval stage of the swallowtail butterfly. And then this is the cocoon or the pupil, the pupa stage. And this is the adult. So nothing like each other. Now, when we, hold on, before we start writing, we've only got five minutes left. Um, I would rather have you not stress about all of the text on these orders. There's a lot more orders that are covered in your book. So uh, pay attention to table 16.1. I'm just going to read through this for you for the sake of time and have it in your brain, okay? Um, table 16.1 has a complete list for right now. Just pay attention to this. So here's four orders I wanted to show you. Odonta means two. So these are dragonflies and damselflies. They don't actually have true teeth, but they have some rather pointy mouth parts that do allow them to bite very well. Um, they have two pairs of mem membranous wings. They have chewing mouth parts. They have a long straight abdomen and they're fast. Dragonflies can fly 45 to 50 miles an hour. So, I mean, that's faster than our freeway speeds here on the island in some places, right? Dragonflies are, dragonflies are fast creatures. Um, the dragonflies we have today are a lot smaller than the dragonflies that were around uh, in ancient times. We have some fossil dragonflies with four foot wingspans. Um, and when you combine those with biting mouth parts, that's not something that you, that would be kind of scary. Yeah. Um, quite please. Yeah. Coleoptera means sheathed wing. So these are beetles. Beetles have two pairs of wings. One of them is a hard, basically exoskeleton. And the other one is the wing that it flies with. So when a beetle flies, it lifts its hard, horny wings out of the way, and then spreads out its membranous wings to fly. Um, this is the biggest order of animal life in the world. 360,000 described species. 360,000 species of beetle. Guys, seventh graders, hush. Thank you. Um, they, uh, they have thick, heavy exoskeletons that can withstand 1,500 times their own weight. 1,500 times their own weight, which would mean that if I were a beetle, I weigh 200 pounds, um, you could put, am I doing this math right? Yes, I am. You could put 3 million pounds on top of me, and I would not be crushed. <laughs> I would not currently survive that situation, right? <laughs> So when you step on a beetle and it pops, you just overcame a lot of a lot of force, right? Proportionally speaking. Um, oh wait, not that kind of dragonfly. Oh, just kidding. That's a dragonfly. So um, two sets of wings, long straight abdomen. They have the largest eyes proportional to their body size in the world. Their eyes basically take up their whole head. Um, and they have almost 360 degrees of sight all around, okay? Um, this is another dragonfly. Oh, there you go. Isn't that amazing? Okay. Um, oh. Okay. This is a damselfly, which is um, in the same, which is in the same order. Damselflies um, have a mouth, but don't really need it because these are one of the kind of creatures that 
when they come out of their final molt and they're sexually mature adults, they only live one day. What? And its only goal is to mate and either if it's a female, mate and lay eggs. If it's a male, find a female and help her lay eggs. And they have one day to get that done and then they will die. So damselflies, it's a rough life, right? <laughs> Damselflies, when they mate, though. Isn't that interesting? So, so when, when the, this is the male, and the male is placing his sperm packet in the female's abdomen, right? But in order for him to get that done, he arches his body to place the sperm packet in the female's abdomen. And the female, in order to help him do this, she has a pair of little pincers in the back of her abdomen. She grabs him by the neck and braces him while he does that. And so, and so uh, they look like a heart. And so, yeah, you can always tell when damsel flies are mating. It looks so romantic. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then they'll both die. So, yeah, this, they both die. So, this happens, she lays she lays eggs, and then they're both dead. So, what's the point of them? Do you lay eggs? Wait, so they just produce more babies than dying? Well, no, no. They, they, they have a quite a, a long, several weeks, like, maturation process. But by the time that they're adults, they have one day as an adult. So they lived Yep. And then beetle. Yep. Beetle diversity is quite incredible. It's a lot of beetles. All right. There you go. The world of insects is amazing. And, uh, oops, just kidding.